That was the president of the United States yesterday in a video posted on Twitter talking about impeachment. We're going to bring in now Mark Levin, the great one, host of Life, Liberty, and Levin, author of Unfreedom of the Press. Mark, no better person to talk to this morning. You've, you've watched this week unfold. Now the word impeachment has made its way into our body politic. Lay it out for us. What are we facing here? Well, we're facing a rogue House of Representatives. The way this process is supposed to work, as you know, and I want to walk through this slowly, is in every other instance of having a president of the United States, three in the past, uh, the House of Representatives laid a foundation. They had a vote, a roll call vote in the House on whether or not to conduct an inquiry. And the reason for that is so the whole nation participates and decides through our elected representatives. Um, so the body politic must must be involved in this process. What Nancy Pelosi did is circumvent that process. She stood up at a podium uh, like she's some kind of dictator and proclaimed that all of a sudden she has decided that the House of Representatives will conduct a formal impeachment inquiry. But it's not the House of Representatives that authorized that. She's picked six of her committee chairmen who are from New York, L.A., Baltimore, and herself from San Francisco to drive this. They want to do it fast. It's in all the newspapers. They want it all done by October so people can't really digest what's taking place. And then they want to throw it into the Senate for a spectacle for a trial. And there's some talk on whether or not the Senate has to actually have a trial under the Constitution. This is where I want everyone to pay attention. The House decides its impeachment process. The Senate decides trials. I've studied this more than anybody else. I actually went back and read the Andrew Johnson trial the trial, the actual transcript of the trial, which you have to get out of the Library of Congress. In his case, he had, as I recall, 11 charges against him. They tried him on three, they came close to one in conviction, then they adjourned and they never brought back the other eight. They just dropped it because it was such a farce. Now in this case, it's a complete farce because Nancy Pelosi has violated all the past processes by cutting out the House of Representatives by a single member from San Francisco and these other members driving an impeachment inquiry. The United States Senate has never been faced with a situation like this in the past presidential uh, impeachment situations. And it must not, it must not give a rubber stamp to a lawless action, in my view, or a process that at least undermines tradition that Nancy Pelosi has undertaken here. The United States Senate must not, and is not required to say, you know what, we're going to take this up because the House sends it to us. It has poisoned the process from the get-go. It is poisoned from the get-go. Here's why. Nancy Pelosi has a 37 majority in the House. I've been reading there's 10 or 12 members who didn't want to go along with that. So that gives her what? 25, give or take. That means if the House actually voted on this, it would be as close to a 50-50 on an impeachment inquiry as there has ever been. There's never been anything this close before because this is being driven for political reasons, not lawful reasons, not constitutional reasons. Everything she's doing, she even changed. I wish we had a few real reporters out, out there, uh, you know, other than you, Ed. I wish we had a, real, a few reporters out there uh -huh. who would actually look at American history so and actually also see that when Nancy Pelosi came in office, she changed the process for hearings. She changed the process for depositions in order to fast speed this stuff. So she has always wanted to, despite the fact, oh, Nancy's holding back AOC. Nancy is AOC. People say AOC took over the house. No, Nancy's old Nancy. She's AOC. She's just smarter than AOC, but dumber in this sense. She gave the United States Senate every reason to say, you know what? We are not going to hold a trial based on what Nancy Pelosi decided and her violation of, Amer of, the, uh, of the history of America when it comes to impeachment. All right, Mark, That's that exactly point, what the Mark, Senate should Mark, say. Okay, Mark, on that point, so you spent about five minutes on the process and attacking Nancy Pelosi. Let's get to the substance. You said I she... should spend a year on it, my okay. friend. <laughs> I, I know you can. Here's, here's my question, very simply. Um, you say that Nancy Pelosi's been lawless. The Democrats say the president is lawless, and they hold up this transcript. So let's get at the substance of their charge and whether or not it, something baby. went wrong in the Oval Office. Go for it. Well, you know, and I've been watching you and a lot of reporters, and you haven't once asked for the identity of the so-called whistleblower. Why is that? 
I want to know the identity. Of, I, I well, I want to know the identity. Should the well, who's asking why? Well, point out. Should I the point out hold on now. Hold on now. That it's secondhand information, and so we'll that's find not out the same is. thing, Ed. It's not the same thing as saying. Let me do it this way. I'm an American citizen. If this CIA operative is going to be the guy that brings down my president, I want to know all about him. I want to know what kind of dogs they have, how many marriages they've had, if they have a DUI. I want to know if they're a partisan. I want to know everything, like they do with, the, with, with everybody else, the media. I want to know this guy should be cross-examined. What kind of a, a situation is this? We're going to bring down a president of the United States, and the Democrats are telling us we can't identify this guy? because his life might be in danger, and then everybody ha swings around his memo like it's the Bible. I have a lot of questions about his memo. I don't need press people interpreting it for me. I can read it myself. I want to question this person about his memo. And as you've been told, everybody now for the last two days, why is it that the CIA changed its whistleblower policy in August when this letter is dated August 12th? Under the former policy before August, under the former policy, he's not a whistleblower. This isn't a whistleblower complaint, and nothing's sent to the United States Congress. How did that happen like this? Those One are other fair questions, had, so let's get to the point then. What happened in the Oval Office on that call? Was it illegal or not? Well, we know it's not illegal. What crime was violated? Can you name one? I'm not naming them. I'm saying others have suggested. Nobody's naming them. But well, I don't know. It's not about me. Hold on, Ed. Ed. It's not about me. It's not illegal. The question is what whether Biden did something illegal. The president didn't do anything illegal. You know how I know? Because Nancy Pelosi's been on every TV show and she can't cite one section of the United States Code where it's illegal. My question is why is Joe Biden above the law? Why is his son above the law? Where is Hunter Biden today? Where is the meat? Don't they want to know? Don't they want to know if the leading contender for the Democrat nomination is a crook? And if his son is a crook? Let me tell you about our president. We've had a special counsel with 2,800 subpoenas and 500 search warrants and 500 witnesses. And Ed, 13 requests to foreign governments for evidence by Mueller. We've had four Democrat senators. Three wrote a letter to Ukraine and said, you damn well better help Mueller investigate Trump. One pressured them the other week and said, you better not investigate Biden. We know that. What do we know about Joe Biden and Hunter Biden? Zero. So you're Zero. okay with a president about, asking another now, president to do a turn on a candidate. You're okay with that? He's a former vice Dirt president. On a candidate? What dirt are you talking about? He, the president of the United States. I'm not saying this you was ask for, illegal. But are you I'm asking say, you, this is, are you okay right. with a president asking his counterpart, this is simple yes or no, to dig up dirt on former vice president Joe Biden and his son? Are you okay with that? First of all, your question is not honest. So I don't give yes That's or no quote quote answers to Let me sorry. finish, Ed. You have all morning. I have two minutes. It's not an honest question. That, show me in the transcript where the president said that. Well, I don't have it in front of Nowhere. me, but there's a whole Nowhere, paragraph where he asked about Joe Biden. Hold on. It's not a trick question. He asked about people. Joe Biden, and he's, the president said... So what he asked about okay, Joe Biden? Is he, he said not asking about people, Joe Biden? The president said a lot of people are wondering about the former vice president and his son's business deal. That's all I'm saying. There's no hidden it's question actually there. not the way so he's put it either. Okay? What you ought is to do, okay? Ed, Ed, what you ought to do is rather than restating it, put a graphic up and read it. That said... Okay, we'll do it. What's the problem, Ed? What's the problem with it? I didn't say there was a problem. I said... Neither did I. I said the answer to your question is no. Okay. It's what do you mean? Why is it okay? There's a lot of things. The question isn't prove a negative. The question is, it's not illegal. It's not immoral. It's not unethical. And if you guys in the media would do your damn job and ask Joe Biden and Hunter Biden what the hell's going on, maybe the president wouldn't have to raise the issue. Why is the president having to raise the issue? And by the way, he didn't raise it the way you said it. He said this has been raised. It was raised in the New York Times. It's been raised by Peter Schweizer and so forth. And nobody wants to look into it. Well, Mark, why instead they, now, don't they have to raise the issue precisely because of the book you wrote that's over your left shoulder, Unfreedom of the Press? I mean, the press is entirely uninterested in the other side and instead bringing everything they can on speculation. We don't know anything. Pete, let me tell you what the press has done. They lied about a quid pro quo. They lied about the president raising this eight times. <clears throat> they lied about the president asking for a favor, trying to tie it to Joe Biden when he was talking about the 2016 election. The American people detest the media, not because they oppose freedom of the press, because they love freedom of the press. The media have taken sides here. 
And what I'm saying is this is an utterly corrupt political partisan process. And it's about time we had some real reporters who would try to get to the bottom of this. Mark, I, I That's it. Mark, if there is no, I don't see any impeachable offense here. If Democrats are unable to cite specificity when it comes to an impeachable offense, are they able to proceed with the impeachment process? And how will that be received by the public? First of all, nothing, nothing stops them. And what they're planning on doing, let me tell you, they have issued hundreds of subpoenas. The media doesn't count them about his family, about his businesses, about his bank accounts. They took the Mueller report and they turned it on its head and said, look at all these examples of obstruction. And it goes on and on. What they're going to do is overwhelm the American people with what is a document for the media. Because they know reporters are going to do whatever they want them to do. The reporters aren't serious. There's going to be a huge backlash in this country one way or another. You can't disenfranchise 63 million people who are, who are onto this who have alternative forms of information. Real cover-up here. Gee, we have the letter and we have the transcript. And all I get are reporters trying to tell me what the transcript says as opposed to what I read with my own eyes and telling me it's the offense of the century that the President of the United States dares to mention something that's in the American newspapers to the Ukrainian president. He doesn't say, get Biden. He doesn't say, I'm digging up dirt on Biden. He doesn't say, do me a favor and get Biden. He says, why don't you talk to my attorney general, look into this. People have questions. Wow. And all the sleazy activity that's going on behind the scenes. I want to know. I want to know if Adam Schiff and his staff have been working with this phony whistleblower. I want to know who the lawyers are who helped him write that complaint, as I was the first to point out before. I want to know the whole activity that's taking place in the shadows of this government to try and bring down a president of the United States. Things being done to this president that have never been done to prior presidents. Where did they keep the transcript of the phone call? Gives a damn. The president has the power to issue an executive privilege order. Doesn't matter if he kept it in his pillow. He can still protect that, but he well, didn't. He but, gave but it Mark, up. Mark, actually, I got your quote, so let me read it to you and let you respond. We got a minute. Uh, the, the president, you wanted the quote. He said on the call, there's a lot of talk about Biden's son, that Biden stopped the prosecution, and a lot of people want to find out about that. So whatever you can do with the attorney general could be great. Biden went around bragging that he stopped the prosecution. So if you can look into it, it sounds horrible to me. So there's the quote. Perfect. I'll let you react. It sounds great. I don't have a problem with that. What's the problem with that? I, I didn't say there was a problem. Have, hold on, Ed. There was a video of Biden. Biden impugns himself. There's a video of Biden. There was, there, the New York Times dropped its investigation of this. Uh, they're busy chasing, uh, you know, racism in America, I guess. But they dropped this, their investigation of this. Yes. What should have happened is all reporters, I mean, they're pretty much a gaggle group, thinks should have said, wow, look what Biden said. You want to connect dots. Let's connect dots. I mean, Mark, we've got more dots to connect, but we've got 10 yeah. seconds. Mark, thank you so much for your time. God, for bless, you. Thanks, God bless you. God bless you. Have a great Sunday. Thank you. Thank you. All right, more Fox and Friends on the other side. We'll try to top that. Probably not. Uh -huh. Stay with us. Ed Henry, school.